Yashodanandana, but the gender and gender. Yashodanandana, but Yamuna tira vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Pijana Balaba Girivarun Hari Jai Gopijana Balaba Girivarun Hari Yasura Nandana Bajajana Ranjana Yasura Nandana Bajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa, Paruddhika Acharya Astoto Dadashishima, His Divine Grace, Shilai Si Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Iskan Bibiti Founder Acharya Shida Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa, Paruddhika Acharya Astoto Dadashishima, His Divine Grace, Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai. Ananda Koti Vaishnava Bindi Ki Jai. Nama Acharya Shida Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Quanta Rajim and Bhagavatam ki jai, the Samaveta Bhakta Vindiki jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Goranga. Narayanam Namaskritya, Narang Chai Vanarotamam, Devim Sadasutim Vyasam. And Tata Jai Mudiriyet. Before reciting this Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, we should offer our respectful obeisances unto Lord Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and to Nar Narayan Rishi, the Supermost Human Being, and to Mother Saraswati, the Goddess of Learning, and to Srila Vyasadeva, the author, and unto Srila Prabhupada, the translator, commentator, and our spiritual master. And Nashta Prayesha Badreshu. 
नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवत्युत्तम श्लोके भक्ति भवति नाइष्टिकी by regular attendance in classes on Srimad Bhagavatam and by rendering devotional service to the pure devotee, all that is inauspicious within the heart is destroyed almost to nil. In loving devotion to the Supreme Lord who is glorified in transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya On this 29th day of June, 2018, in San Diego, a reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Canto 4, The Creation of the Fourth Order. Chapter 4, Daksha Curses Lord Shiva, text number 19. Nishidhyamanak sadasasya mukyar Daksho giritraya vasridya shapam Tasmad vanishkram yavavridha manyur Jagama kauram yanajam niketanam Nishidhyamanak Sasadasya Mukya Daksho Giritra Yavasridya Shapam Tasmad Manishkram Yavavridha Manjur Jagama Kauram Yanijam Niketanam Nishidhyamanak Sasadasya Mukya Daksho giritra yavasridya shapam Tasmad manishkram yavavridha manjur Jagama kaurav yanajang niketanam Nishidhimana sasadasya mukya Daksho giritraya vithridya shapam Trasmad vanishkram yavavridha manjur Jagama kauram yanijang niketanam Nishidhyamanak sasadasya mukya Daksho giritraya vithridya shapam Asmad manishkram yavavridna manjur Chagama kaurab yanajang niketanam Nishidhyamana sasadasya mukya Taksho giritraya vasridya shapam Tasmad vanishkram yavavridna manjur Nagdigama kauram yanajang niketanam Let me give it a shot. Nishidyamana sasadasya mukya Taksho giritraya vasridya shapam Tasmad vanishkram yavavridna manjur Jagama kauram yanajang niketanam Nishidyamana I'm sorry, did you want to chant? Being requested not to Saha Hi daksha Sadasya mukyai By the members of the sacrifice Dakshaha Daksha Giritraya To Shiva Visridya Giving Shapam A curse Tasmat From that place 
Vinishkramya, going out. Vivridhamanyuhu, being exceedingly angry. Jagama, went. Kauravya, Ovidura, Nijam, to his own. Niketanam, home. Translation, Maitreya continued, My dear Vidura, in spite of the requests of all the members of the sacrificial assembly, Daksha, in great anger, cursed Lord Shiva and then left the assembly and went back to his home. Report. Anger is so detrimental that even a great personality like Daksha, out of anger, left the arena where Brahma was presiding and all the great sages and pious and saintly persons were assembled. All of them requested him not to leave, but infuriated, he left, thinking that the auspicious place was not fit for him. Puffed up by his exalted position, he thought that no one was greater than he in argument. It appears that all the members of the assembly, including Lord Brahma, requested him not to be angry and leave their company, but in spite of all these requests, he left. That is the effect of cruel anger. In the Bhagavad Gita, therefore, it is advised that one who desires to make tangible advancement in spiritual consciousness must avoid three things, lust, anger, and the mode of passion. Actually, we can see that lust, anger, and passion make a man crazy, even though he be as great as Daksha. The very name Daksha suggests, suggests that he was expert in all material activities. But still, because of his aversion towards such, saintly personali such a saintly personality as Shiva, he was attacked by these three enemies, anger, lust, and passion. Lord Chaitanya, therefore, advised that one be very careful not to offend Vaishnavas. He compared offenses toward a Vaishnav to a mad elephant. As a mad elephant can do anything horrible, so when a person offends a Vaishnav, he can perform any abominable action. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnana Anjana Shalakya Chukshu Unmilatam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisances unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So from the very beginning of Bhagavatam, say, second chapter, first canto, which is um, such an important chapter, we learn there the essence of Dharma, that it's meant to awaken our original loving devotion to the Supreme Lord, who is the Transcendental Lord. And we learn that uh, bhakti yoga, the practice of bhakti yoga, very quickly produces a sense of detachment and knowledge. Now, detachment is just the opposite of what we're seeing here. Daksha is extremely attached to his daughter, which is understandable in some way. Uh, and he was, now he felt, he, re he revealed here that he felt coerced by Brahma in offering it to Shiva, who he, he, his, offering his daughter to Shiva, whom he felt was uh, not uh, worthy of, the of his daughter. And he had this whole list of reasons. He's, you know, an avaduta, he's smeared with the crematoria ashes, he always consorts with the Buddhas and the Pratas, his followers, and all kinds of, he doesn't have a home. Uh, so all these reasons, he, he's, uh, he feels anything but detached, very attached to his position as well. So as we proceed in that, um, cha that chapter, that section, beginning with first Keno, second chapter, text six, uh, we get to the point near the end where these, there's these five extremely significant verses, and they deal with this topic of how... Uh, pure souls, those who are on the progressive path of dharma and purification, hopefully, hopefully to achieve the goal of human life, uh, are meant to become free of these lower modes of nature. And so we have this, this uh, Shrinvatam Sukata Krishna Punishavana Kirtana, Rudindakstoya Bhadrani Vidanoti Suritsata, that once one is on the path and he's, and he's developed a taste for hearing and chanting about Krishna, which comes from service to the devotee, the pure devotee, the guru especially, 
then Krishna from within the heart, when that chanting is done purely by a sincere soul, he cleanses away all these abhadras. Now abhadras is things that are inauspicious, that you don't want. They're pretty synonymous with an art, as far as I, far as I can tell. So, uh, Vinu Noti, he, he himself cleanses it away. Now what's the result of that? Well, that's the verse we chant before every class. Nashta prayeshu, abhadreshu, nityam bhagavata sevaya, bhagavat yuttama shloke, bhakti bhavati naishtiki. That by this process of hearing and chanting in association with devotees and following other principles of bhakti which support those two, uh, practically to nil all of these unwanted things in the heart are destroyed, almost to nil. Nashta prayeshu, or eshu means almost destroyed. Nityam uh, Bhagavata, by serving the Bhagavatam, by hearing and chanting and discussing and meditating on, and by serving the Mahabhagavat. Two Bhagavats. Prabhupada makes it very clear in that purport. One without the other won't do. Bhakti uh, Bhavati Naishtiki. One becomes fixed in devotion. Nishta. The Nishta platform told by uh, 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 Rupa Goswami in his Nectar Devotion. Firm, firm faith, confidence. And what's, what's the concomitant situation of that? Uh, tada, at that time, Rajas Tamo Bhava Kama Lobha Deyashchaye. Chaiti Eta Anabhadam Sthitam Sattvik Prasidati. So, at uh, that time, Tada Rajas Tamo Bhava, the, the, the effects of passion and ignorance are uh, summarized as Kama Lobha Adiya, etc. Lust, greed, etc. One of which is anger. Are... Uh, not re- present anymore because you're uh, fixed in the mode of goodness. The mode of goodness is characterized by calmness, uh, tolerance, uh, philosophical f- frame of mind. Uh, it's mentioned in the, in the, in the 14th chapter. So uh, that's, a, that's a preliminary platform upon which all devotees should aspire. That's the, one of the reasons in the art, well, you have an ashram where there's all these rules and regulations. Regulations, you're, you're eating, you're sleeping, you're getting up, and especially cleanliness and all these things meant to support the mode of goodness and manifest the mode of goodness. And on that platform, you can then very nicely practice devotional service and come to the mode of pure goodness. So, uh, and, that, and it's only through this path, really, you, you can't you know, be in the mode of passion and ignorance, very greedy. I mean, it's very, very rare that from that, from that platform, you're immediately going to become a pure devotee. By the mercy of the Lord, or especially the Lord, or his pure devotee, it can happen. I'm thinking of Jagai Madai, who practically had, where was their sadhana bhakti? You know, they, they were blessed, they were, they were vicious uh, decoits, and, 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 but then they got the mercy of Lord Nityananda, and, and Kripa Siddhi came, you know, with Lord Chaitanya, they became very pure and humble Vaishnavas. But for the vast, vast majority, they have to go through this process. So, the reason I bring all this up is because uh, this, this is a, a, a very wonderful, tangible side product. The, the, multi, the ultimate goal of bhakti is, is prema. There's no question about it. But along the way, you're meant to develop all of these good qualities, one of which is being devoid of anger. He probably has anger, lust, and passion. Well, uh, uh, lust, anger, and greed is often given as the three. Greed, the mode of passion results in that also, in, in loba, the passion. And we refer that in the 14th chapter. Or just so loba evacha, when he gives the results of these different modes, one of them is, uh, is of course, lust, and then greed, they go together. So I wanted to share uh, this little section of the Bhagavad Gita at the end of the 16th chapter, where this comes up, and he, Krishna is directly uh, dealing with this, uh, this subject of the dangers of getting in the mode of passion and even the mode of ignorance and opening up the doors to a hellish existence. He's just described in the 16th chapter, beginning with a wonderful description, I think it's 26 uh, qualities uh, that are saintly, uh, uh, beginning with fearlessness for the sannyasis and so forth. But after uh, three verses of that, I think, three or four verses, he then says, well, now I'm going to describe the demoniac nature. We need to know that because that demon is also lurking within you know, each of us. You know, in this age, the demon and the devotee is in the same art, right? <laughs> so, 
Uh, then he, he, he launches into a wonderful description of the nature of the demons, beginning with Dumbo. Dumbo means uh, hypocritical hypocrisy, which is uh, infused with false pride. The false pride makes it hypocritical. Uh, and, and he goes on in Isha Doham Aham Bogi Siddhoham Balavan Sukhi. Krishna is, is, is pretending to be a demon here. He's giving a mantra that all the demons, whether they know it or not, they accept. I am the Lord. If I may not be the Lord of the whole universe, but I'm the Lord of here, my, my home or my business or whatever. You know, I'm a, I'm a controller. And I'm the enjoyer of whatever I can grab. Siddhoham, I'm perfect, powerful, and happy. You know, this is the Siddhoham Balamansuki. And, and then he even describes, you know, the capitalist mentality. So much money as I made today, and by my schemes I'll make more tomorrow. It's, it, it, this, this is a wonderful land of democracy and capitalism. The demo, you know, demon crazy, and, and, and the demon crazy means the, cap, the capitalists are running it, and they're, they're, they completely conform to the description of the 16th chapter. Just the idea of making more and more. Now, you know, you, you can see the results of it. And that is that the earth can't support many more successful capitalists with all this technical, technological advancement. They you know, go into the, into, this, into the sea and fish. I mean, fishing is okay. You know, it's not the best uh, <laughs> uh, occupation. But when you have a few fishermen with some nets and they catch fish, you know, it's supportable. But now they go in there with dynamite and they have the huge nets miles long. They're just destroying me. You know, it's a, it always goes to the extreme because that's, that's what it is. Well, if we can make a lot of money but, you know, by small nets, we can make even more money by mile-long nets and blowing up dynamite down there and killing all of it. So this is what, what uh, the demonic mentality leads to, what we see today. So just the opposite is Krishna consciousness. So here Krishna says, after that whole thing and describing that these demons... Uh, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're so uh, harmful to everybody. They, Ungra Karma, they perform horrible acts meant to destroy the world. Prabhupada talks that that's in the atom bomb. And then he says at the end of the chapter, he says, okay, summing up. Trivadham Nadakaste Dham Dwadam Nashanam He's just described how I, Krishna says, you know, eventually throw these demons down into hellish life or hell itself. So he says, there are three gates leading to this hell. Three gates. Tribadham Narakasyadam, Dwaram, Nashanamadam. The word dwar is very important in, in Sanskrit and Bengali, I think it's the same thing. It means a gate, but it also means a way or a means, you know, and it can be a means toward degradation as well as toward ele elevation. So there's three gates leading to this hell. Kama, Kroda, Tata, Lobas, Tasma, Eta, Treyam, Tajate. So now he's giving a normative instruction to Arjun. He's saying this lust, anger, and greed. These are the three gates. You should give them up. Tasmaneta trayam tajet. And then he gives the benefit of doing that. Etaya mukta konteya tamo dwarais to be in adaha. Achayat yatman akshreyas tato yati padam gatim. Here we have the word shreya coming up again. It comes up again and again in, in, in the Bhagavad Gita. It's a central word for, for us to understand. Shreya, or ultimately nikshreya, means the ultimate good. Shreya is good, welfare, auspicious. Uh, uh, situation. And nikshreyasa means the ultimate good. So sometimes shreya alone is used to mean ultimate good, but when you're emphasizing it's nikshreya. So here he's saying uh, those who have escaped these three gates, those who have given up or done, done something in order to transcend or, and, and, and expunge those elements which you're practically born with, and you were born with kama, kama is why we're here. And if you, if you get bad association and you're associated with the mode of passion, that's going to develop into anger, undoubtedly, and greed. So, but here he says, Eta Vamukta, those who have been liberated from these three, Eta Vamukta, Tomo Dwara is to be another, these three gates to darkness and ignorance. What do they do? Acharat Yatmanakshayas, they act in such a way for their own welfare. Toto Yati Parangatim. And ultimately, they go to the supreme goal. In other words, they go back to Godhead. So here is the direct either-or situation. You know that illustration in Gita? I think they still have it. The one where there's, there's a path upward, there's a stairway upward, and a st and they were downward, and the, and the, the, uh, the Maya, Maya Devi, whoever, you know, they're pulling the, the, the soul downward, 
and the uh, devotees are leading and the guru is leading the soul upward into light. That's really what it's all about. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to stay on that path up to light. So he says, here's what happens for those who are able to escape these three gates. And that is, they act for their own welfare, maintaining their freedom from these things and moving toward firm bhakti and, and going back to Godhead. And they ultimately do that. And then the last two verses, to me, are like one of the most significant in the whole Gita. It says, Yek Shastra Vinamutsraja. Now he brings the Shastra into it. Because how do we know what are those activities that are going to be auspicious for us, that are going to lessen the fire of lust and greed and anger? You know, we have to learn from Shastra and from those who are living the Shastra. They all go, go together. The personified Shastra, the Bhagavat, Bhagavat Bhagavatam, and the person Bhagavat. The book Bhagavat and the person Bhagavat. So now he's talking about the book Bhagavat, and meaning Gita as well. So he says, those who disregard the vidhis, the instructions of the Shastra, and continue to act according to their whims, lust, they don't get any perfection. Nor any happiness, nor that they go to the ultimate goal. So in other words, they still remain victimized by these three, and they still remain headed in, you know, through one of those gates. And therefore, the, fi the final verse is a therefore verse, means the conclu conclusion of the argument, which you can say is like the whole chapter. Tasmat chastram pramanam te karya karya vivastito. Gyatva shastra vadhanoktam karma karta maharisi. Which means, therefore, O Arjun and all of us, to understand what to do and what not to do in this life, which is, after all, the whole ball game, Because human life means we have this high intelligence, but if we don't get by proper association, we'll use our good intelligence for um, animalistic propensities. In other words, we won't know what to do for our own welfare, and we're absolutely 100% sure to make a mistake and go down. So therefore, we need to consult genuine Shastra. And this was Prabhupada's great mission, you know, he didn't come to America until he had substantial Shastra in his bag, those three first canon books. And his, his aim there was very much to complete the Bhagavatam and, and, and uh, you know, uh, use it as the foundation for spreading Krishna consciousness, which it is. You know, that and, of course, the Bhagavad Gita and the other books which follow the Bhagavatam. So, Tasma uh, Shastra, you should consult Shastra about what to do and what not to do. And having consulted, he kind of he, not, he, he, he secures the, the, the argument with the last line. And having understood, one should actually act and fail to, and, and refrain from acting according to the rules of the Shastra as a matter of duty. Because we have to accept it as a duty. You're not going to be spontaneously uh, willing to act according to the Shastra right away because we're conditioned souls. Therefore, it takes a, a, a serious commitment, and that's why we have all these vows, and we have all these rules and regulations, and do's and don'ts, and changing the name and everything, is, is to give us these, these spiritual strength to follow the Shastra until it becomes second nature or even spontaneous. That's what happens. It's, it's, it's coming back to our natural state. All of this uh, conditioning, and, and looking to the material nature for your happiness and your security, it's completely uh, illusory. It's, it's a huge mistake. That's the big mistake. You know? And we keep making that mistake, even in the human form. The lower animals, they're not making a the mistake. They're just completely bound by their conditioning. They don't, they, don't know. they don't have the option. But the human form, we have the higher intelligence where we can inquire into these things and actually uh, follow the Shastra by determination to come to the point of clarity and peacefulness and ultimately uh, breaking free from the bonds of, the, of all of our attachments. So now we, we have Bhagavatam is full of good lessons and here this lesson is uh, ongoing here that the fire of anger it, it, just as lust burns like fire anger also burns like fire and it's catching it's just like a, a fire, you know, starts somewhere and it'll catch and it'll, it can burn the whole fires to burn the whole building. That's why they have such an effort to try to control it because it gets totally out of hand. Last year we had, now it's starting to burn again, Northern California. It's still going on. 
Remember last year, the devastating fires in, uh, what was the name of that town? San, Sonoma County in general. Yeah. So the fire of anger can devastate uh, our, our, you know, controlled atmosphere right here. Is that if you let if you let anger take hold because you're uh, you're not following carefully enough the process of devotional service, which protects you from that, keeps you on the mode of of, of, of goodness, and makes you more tolerant. Makes you more tolerant. You have to tolerate so many things in this in this world, no matter who you are. But in a, in a uh, in an atmosphere like this, it, it's so necessary to be tolerant. I'm just learning, uh, just listening to Prabhupada lectures. He's speaking in. Uh, 74, I think the winter of 74 in Bombay. And at that time, they were at the height of the, you know, fighting the government and so much uh, opposition, Mr. Meyer, uh, in trying to establish that, just establish the land, just get the land, what to speak of, you know, before even building anything on it. And Bombay and Juhu Beach. And Prabhupada is speaking, he's, he's speaking about those, those uh, verses that I like to call this Sadhu Sangashtika, describing the importance of associating with uh, 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 sadhus and what the qualities are. And Tatikshava is the first one, is tolerance. Tatikshava Karunika. And on basis of that tolerance, you can actually be merciful. If you, if you try to be merciful without being tolerant, then the, the first reverse, which will be reverses and, and negative you know, uh, reactions, and you'll uh, give it up. So they go together. Tatikshava Karunika. So he's selling, we have to be tolerant. What can we do? The government is against us. The people here are against us. They say it's an annoyance that we're chanting Hare Krishna. You know? We could just leave. We have, he says, hundreds of centers. He probably had maybe you know, 75, 80 centers around the world by that time. And uh, why, should we, why should we go through this whole battle? But no. You know? he, he had promised uh, Radha Rasabihari already that he would build him a temple. So that's his personal commitment. But, the, but the, the devotee in general, I mean, Prabhupada could have given up. He was even more going back, back in 66, 65. You know, he was going back to the, to the port and seeing what the schedule was to go back on the Jalatuta. He never, he never did, but that option was always there. He, he, you know, he only had a, a visa for a few months. His plan, you know, his, according to the early days, his plan was to just, you know, sell a few books maybe, you know, and try to go back. But, but he didn't go back. <laughs> he, he persevered on, even to the point of having a heart attack, you know, and a stroke, and then going on after that. So that's the the nature of the pure devotee who uh, is, uh, you know, has been empowered by Krishna to go through all these things. Sees all the reversals as simply more ways in which he can prove his love for Krishna. You know, despite all of these things. You know, if you want to take me, go ahead. But I'm not giving up the field. You know, these people depend on me. Where would we be if Prabhupada hadn't had that determination? So, that, so getting that determination is not easy. It means being completely free from these lower modes and, and being uh, uh, so dedicated and, and uh, determined and really empowered by the orders of the guru and by Lochitanya prediction and all of these things. And seeing the need, the crying need, what does it mean, paradukha duki? You know, that's that's a, a, It means that you really feel the pain of the others, that the others' misery, that all these people's misery, even if they seem to be happy for a little bit, uh, is affecting you, to the point where you're ready to sacrifice so much of your own comfort for uh, giving them uh, Krishna consciousness. So the, just just the opposite is we get this illustration of Daksha. He's illustrating, you know, he, it's all about him. Just like our beloved leader, it's all about him. Every issue, whether it's you know war with uh, or no war with Korea or the trade or whatever he's doing, it's all about him. How will this, you know, make me look better, and not you know? And the whole thing is is, is, is he's he's like a poster boy for chapter sixteen. <laughs> you could just <laughs> go down the list, you know, Ishiroham, a humbogi. <laughs> It's a, it's a caricature. It's like <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of lessons there for us. You know? <laughs> it's a dangerous situation. I mean, we see this in the Bhagavatam. You know, the demons could cause havoc. 
in any society. So there's a lot of prayer, a lot of chanting we got to do, you know. The, the, there's no other way out. It's not going to come through some political party or something. You know, the only the only the only hope is a total revolution, and that's not not it's not the you know the uh, Bolshevik revolution type thing. It's a revolution in consciousness, and as as small as we are, you know, as we're you know crying in the wilderness, so to speak. But these this a couple of years ago, we're all conscious of the 50th anniversary thing. And you can see, oh, you know, there's so many devotees all over the world. Somehow, even though we made so many mistakes, I mean, in the 80s, it looked like the whole thing was going to dissolve. You know, no one, I, I couldn't see a path that it was the whole, that the thing was going to really cohere. I was just doing my work on Bhagavad Gita and hoping for the best. You know, I wasn't involved in the day-to-day -day affairs. But somehow, by Krishna's grace and Prabhupada's mercy, it, it survived and became, you know, things. And we've had various crises since. But it's going on because the holy name is so powerful, it's so pure. And, and, and you know, Prabhupada wants it and all the great Acharyas want it. So it's going to happen. And we can't see how. Just like no one, no one could possibly have predicted when Prabhupada got off that boat in 1965 and you know, didn't know which way to turn left or right. No one could possibly predict that it, that it would, even Prabhupada you know, was amazed, how it would expand and, and explosion, the Hare Krishna explosion. You know, but it, but th that was all Krishna's doing. So it can still explode, just like we were just uh, like it, like what was one of the main uh, events that really made it explode? George Harrison, you know, <laughs> George Harrison's participation. This is you're living in a celebrity culture. It means that some people are known by everybody in the world, the, the well, most wealthy man in the world, and all of these things, and entertainers and whatever you know. They're also human beings. They also can begin chanting Hare Krishna. They can they can meet uh, one of you know our leading lights who, who can turn them all around, and they can have a tremendous influence on the world. So we shouldn't despair, but we should take care of our own thing that we have control over, and that is our own sadhana, our own life in Krishna consciousness, and we should try to be uh, you know make a difference, meaning mean good soldiers. To be an example in this world, to be happy, to be peaceful, without, with practically no, none of the emoluments that people are struggling so hard to get, you know, that's an amazing thing. And that, can, that in itself is, is something that's attractive. To see someone who is, is, despite all of the craziness going around, is still equal poised and, uh, you know, not deviating and embodying a, a, a deeply pr profound religious culture and spiritual culture that is available to all. That, that can be a very powerful preaching, just to be Krishna conscious and to make an effort to give it to others. So, we're, I was thinking of le reading ahead here, but uh, we're going to be covering this cursing and counter-cursing for a few more days. But it's just like a big fire that's taking place. And what's ignited it is, you know, Daksha's uh, anger that uh, he, 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 out, of, out of ignorance, he just does not know she was glorious and he's not willing to understand it, he, you know. And that, uh, that anger can be a very destructive feature, so we should not let ourselves be prone to that. That's really a, mo a, 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 um, a manifestation of the mode of ignorance. Passion degrades quickly into ignorance. Karma becomes crota. And then uh, so many things happen that we'll see it causes havoc in, in certainly in Daksha's life. And what about, what about Sati? You know, it's, so uh, it's a good lesson for us. Okay, let me read this verse again. My dear Vidura, in spite of the requests of all the members of the sacrificial assembly, Daksha, in great anger, cursed Lord Shiva and then left the assembly and went back to his home. Any questions, comments, discussion? Okay, I'm going to give you a poem. You know, it is said in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that actually was, we were supposed to read that shikshastik every day. So I'm going to give you the first verse. You can carry it through the next seven. 
Those who know it, chant along. Chito darpana marjanam, pavamahada vagni nevapanam, shreya kaidava chandrika patadanam, vindhyabadhu jivanam, anandam budivardhanam, pratipadam purnamita swadanam, sarvatmas naparam param vijayate shri krishna sankirtanam. All glories to the chanting of Sri Krishna's holy names, which easily extinguishes samsara's blazing flames by polishing the lust-encrusted mirror of the heart. The chanting is the waxing moon that knows the secret art of causing the white lotus of good fortune to unfurl its petals far and wide throughout this bleak and blighted world. Of transcendental knowledge which will take us to life's goal, the chanting of the name of Krishna is the life and soul. The ocean of ecstatic bliss floods far beyond its bounds, wherever Krishna's merciful and mystic name resounds. Indeed, whenever Krishna's names are sung in congregation, at every step one tastes a joy that knows no limitation. So hear with great attention, as I earnestly request, please chant Sri Krishna's holy names and be supremely blessed. The soothing nectar of the name will bathe your consciousness. Bestow pure love for Krishna and eradicate distress. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. My hope and my plan is to do the whole thing at the Ratha Yatra in Laguna Beach in about a week's time.